Hey, here we go. Wow, isn't this awesome? It's wonderful. Never see. I never can get. I can I never can get used to this. <laughs> never gets. I mean, let me turn my camera up. Yeah. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Hey, brother Mark. How, How you going, going, sister? Good. Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> I'm over here. <laughs> We're always trying to figure out what time it is where you are. Eleven o'clock. You know how I work it's it a, out. You know how I work it out. It's eleven o'clock over here, so I just. It's eleven o'clock in the morning, which means it's eleven o'clock at night for you. Takeaway two. Okay. That's how I Very work good. it. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Oh look, someone's here. Quick, quick, quick. Hi. Hey. Oh, hi. How are you doing? I have to get way down here. You got the camera real low. You're looking over there. They're over there. Oh. Look, they're right there. Can you tell me how you got a tea in here? Oh. How you doing, Amy? Hi, good. Hi, oh. Say hello, everybody. There she is. Look at her. Hello. Look at that. She's, she's looking, looking too. Yeah, she's very, very alert. Hey. Hello, Isabella. Hi, sweetie. Isabella. She's hello. Good. Feeding interrupted. She's not impressed. Oh, there it is. Oh. You can have that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Have you seen that? <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. You need to put that. Oh. Yeah. That's it. I like it. It's, it's okay. okay. All right. Bye. Nice, nice seeing you. I'll see ya. <laughs> see ya, you later, sister. Bye bye. Love you. Bye bye. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Yeah, you too. Wonderful. So everybody should have a foundational understanding after the first 20 minutes of moon phases and what it really means. There hasn't been much scripture in it yet, so I thought I would probably chuck a summary at the end of, of what and break it right down of what what in a few minutes what it really means. But I thought the whole body in the in the middle I would get you to do so that we get the full understanding of basically what's the big deal. I mean. Uh, us younger believers, if we're coming up to a feast, we're like, oh, when's that feast again? I'll oh, look on Lou's site. He's got the dates. <laughs> that seems to be the extent for a lot of us who are busy and have jobs and families. It's like who don't have telescopes or not looking at the moon or anything or don't know really right. how how to. Um, yeah. Or not following it like that. Um, yeah. Well. So, so we just check Lou, check, check Lou's website. So... What's the with the lunar study? Explain what the big deal is, or you know what what they're really attempting to do, and what is the lunar? What is what do they believe in the first place? You know. Explain well, you know, as I as I've understood some of this, uh, it didn't start until uh, around 1998 or 1999. That uh, actually, I think it was even after that, but it, my memory is off because uh, I didn't document it. But it seemed like it was beyond uh, 1999. But I heard I got a call from a man who lived in Tennessee at the time. He may still live there, and I've already lost contact with him. But uh, he said that he wanted to talk to me about an idea that he had, and that idea was because he worked at night and he was always seeing the moon in different phases, and he was up all night and he thought the moon was trying to tell him something. Yeah. And of course, he was a believer. Yeah. And uh, the indicator uh, that he was, or the indication that he was getting, was that the moon was really, really important. And what that did was it triggered an idea in his head that maybe the week was based upon the, the phases of the moon. And he couldn't work it out exactly that where you could divide the month by seven because 29.5 days doesn't divide evenly. So anyway, that was the first I'd heard of it, and that was the first time that many people, well, no one had heard of it at that time that I knew of anyway, but the thing that happened was uh, another year went by, and I saw a couple more people starting to trickle in and call me about that. And then I was discussing this, and I said, well, there's no basis for this in Scripture. Uh, and I pointed to the fact that 
you know, you're pulling a, a, a text out of the scriptures and holding it up and making it say something that it's not even teaching. What and that's that? what a lot of people do. What was that text? <clears throat> Well, there were various texts. Uh, I don't recall exactly what they were, but they okay. were, you know, uh, one of the texts was, uh, uh, it, you know, involving Daoud or David and Jonathan, as they call them, where, uh, you know, it says that uh, tomorrow you will be missed at the dinner because there's going to be a, moon, a new moon. Mm -hmm. And, and they, they were saying this in advance, which is really controversial because how could they know if, if you're not, you know, citing it, but they had ways of knowing because the sliver the sliver moon appears in the morning hours before mm. sunrise. Yeah. Uh, and that tells you that the next day mm. the, there will be no moon at all and that's the new moon. Mm. But you see people have to, they've been taught by their leaders that they're to watch for a crescent moon and that's the new moon. And that's not really the new moon. Mm. The new moon is the dark moon. But yeah. people have argued argued about that for a long time, and we accept both those brothers that do and don't. But uh, that's how Daoud and Jonathan knew, you know, yeah. or yeah, who. Uh, but anyway, the texts uh, that would be one area of text where that uh, person was m misguided. They were uh, looking for little loopholes, and of course, Yahuwah, when Israel came out of Mitzrayim or Egypt, what they did was. Uh, they they had to be rebooted, and, re, and they had to recall the Sabbath. It was something to be remembered, and they had to be shown what day is Yahuwah's Sabbath again. The Sabbath had not gone away. No. They had just not observed it hmm. in their hundreds of years of captivity. So Yahuwah used manna to illustrate the day that, the you know, was the, the day before the Sabbath, he would give them a double portion, mm. and that was very apparent. And and then the people would see none if they went outside the camp. Mm. They weren't supposed to go outside the camp at all. Deuteronomy 16 says, "Let no man go out of his place mm. on the Sabbath mm. because you don't have any business to do. You know, there's yeah. no work, there's no business. You're supposed to be in your place, in your vicinity. Yeah. Anyway, they were going out into the wilderness to see if they could find any manna. And, of course, it was very apparent there wasn't any. So that one day, every seven days, you know, or every seventh day, I should say, is very clearly a pattern. And, of course, the uh, in music, and I've, I sent you an email showing yeah. some ideas yeah. about how there's seven notes, and there's really only seven natural notes. Mm. And, of course, the confusion is they don't start... Uh, in the in the natural key, uh, the key of A is uh, three sharps, I believe, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, C is all natural notes. So yeah. the scale starts out C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So you've got two tetrachords, yeah. or a total of eight notes there. But you see, the octave is a re is a repeat of the first note, and there's really only seven. Notes, yeah. mm. and that's the same way it is with weeks, uh, the mm. seven days, mm. and of course you do have design music too. I mean, yes. he didn't show us in scripture, yeah. but the natural world knows what harmony is and what dissonance is, mm. and so if we're not walking together, if it, let's say you've got an orchestra, and you've got the clarinet section, and the uh, trombone section all playing in different, they have different ideas and interpretations of what we're playing. Yeah. They're in different keys, and some of them have more notes in the scale than others. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's going to sound chaotic. Yep. You know, there's not going to be the same number of beats <clears throat> per measure. See, we have to play the same song together. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. we, in fact, if you go back and think about a real person, Let's take uh, Chris Coster, for example. He's dead now. Uh, the, he was the one that translated the scriptures. Yeah. Uh, he's living in South Africa. During that man's lifetime, he never heard the term lunar Sabbath. And I don't yeah. think anybody ever heard that term. It's not written in scripture. There's no lunar Sabbath written in scripture. Yeah. If you can find it, uh, just let us know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're bandying around with these terms yeah. that don't even exist. No. We're just making things up. Yeah. So. And um, 
how old was he when he died, and how long ago did he die? Was he uh, from? I think it was uh, 1994. Yeah. Yeah. And was he something your, like around that time? Your generation. Uh, I could be old? off. So your generation or older oh, or? I think he was older. I don't know his age. I, okay. I never. Never ask him how old. Hey, how old are you? <laughs> old are you? In case anybody wants to know, I'm yeah. 61 years old right now. Yeah. And uh, but of course, I really, I, I I don't feel 61. I feel like I'm about uh, 19, maybe 20. <laughs> but uh, I don't think I'm old enough to go into a bar. You know, yeah. I wouldn't want to. Yeah. I don't have any. Uh, but I really do feel very youthful inside. Of course, older people always do. Um, yeah. yeah. They don't know that they look old. You know, yeah. or they know they look old, but they don't feel like they look old. Yeah. Anyway, the uh, thing of it is, Chris Coster is one example. Uh, George Washington, uh, the founder of uh, you know the uh, United States of America, uh, or one of the presidents. He was actually the eighth president. Say so he was the first. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if you look that up on YouTube or I mean uh, uh, Google, you'll find out that uh, George Washington was the eighth president or something. You know, yeah. but uh, people are taught. <clears throat> differently. But in the history books, you can't find Lunar Sabbath. You can't find it in anything. 1800s, during the 1800s, no one ever uh, said, well, you know, the Lunar Sabbath is lost. We've got to restore this. Mm -hmm. See, this is all just new winds of doctrine that are just blowing around because people are interpreting things. See, the, the term exegesis is a Greek term, and it means to look at Scripture and read what it says and not try to make up your own opinions about it, mm. but to understand what you, you know. Mm. And if people read scripture, then they'll get the right answer. But when you follow other people with outside ideas, then you've got this idea you're carrying into scripture with you. And that's mm. called eisegesis. Yeah. And that's the that's the errant thing to do. That's that's wrong. If you do that. Mm -hmm. Then you're walking around bringing things like the Trinity into your into your faith. Mm -hmm. There's not a Trinity in the Scriptures. It's being taught. You're inferring those things. You're 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 forcing it to say something that it is not saying. You're trying to you make this trying to make the Scriptures suit your mindset. Right. You already have had, so you believe it, and mm -hmm. you bring it to the study. You know. So dealing. So with you see it there. Yeah, dealing with the subject of Sabbath, um, and a lot of religious people, I know we were taught when we actually first started thinking seriously about the Sabbath, we were still in Christianity, and the pastor at the time said, oh, well, it says, JC, he's the Sabbath, so if you're in him, you're in rest. So, um, but the, the main theme from reading your teachings that I gather is that the whole point of the manner was to remind and train who was people back into his covenant? The covenant wasn't new, was it? He was reminding them of his covenant that he made with Abraham, that he probably he had in the garden, probably as well, didn't he? He had to remind Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very exactly the way you stated it. It's there's that Sabbath is a seven day week, and there's no eighth day. The eighth no. day is actually the first day again. Yeah, and it's always been that way. Everyone understands that uh, mm. all all through civilization, and even mm. in uh, un, uh, places where no one has ever traveled, they still have mm. a seven day week in mm. these uh, very primitive cultures. Because they're trying to say that this covenant changed in this way, and then another covenant came along and it changed that, and another covenant came along and it changed that. But when we understand what a covenant is, our marriage vow, it's who he is, and he doesn't change. So, I mean, he might have made it with mm. different different people along the way or opened the doors to the Gentiles maybe, you know, when he renewed the covenant. But what, uh, you know, the whole point of the Sabbath and the manner, and I think what I'm trying to say is that's why the lunar Sabbath is such an abomination, isn't it? Because it's disproving. If you can prove that the lunar Sabbath is correct, then the week of creation and the scripture and the account and the the authenticity of scripture is uh, mm -hmm. if, you, if you can prove the lunar Sabbath is true, then, then scripture is a lie, isn't it? So in, in that aspect, you're working with the evolutionists. and uh, um, you know. Yeah, it's, if it's flopping around and changing all the time and you have to track it in a strange way, and how, how could you ever create any kind of order mm. when you have that kind of chaos going on? Well, you see, the adversary 
the enemy <clears throat> the enemy is actually wanting to uh, create chaos mm. and lies and of course the people are just sheep and they're ready to accept the weirdest thing there is first mm. but um, if if the lunar Sabbath was actually true, then there would be a record of something having been changed in the past mm. to the pattern we have now, and there is not. Yeah, there's it's been yeah. that way, and the uh, fact that is that the the adversary did tamper with the seven day week. Mm. Now, if the adversary was so upset about the fact that people were resting every seventh day that he changed it to the first day of the week. Mm. If that's what the adversary really, in fact, did, and we understand that he did, yeah. because in, in yeah. Daniel 7, verse 25, it says that he will change times and laws, and, uh, you know, that's a, that's a prophecy. And, and the circus fathers openly admit that, it. <laughs> yeah. Mm. If he had done that, then uh, why would he, why, if, the real, if the true seventh-day Sabbath is not real, then yeah. why would he change it? Mm. Why would he want to get away from that? And then in Islam, he has done something differently too. Mm. You know, he's wiped out that day of rest. They they work on that day. Mm. Uh, so he's got these two very large faiths with billions of followers, a billion uh, Roman Roman Catholic and Christian people, and then you've got a, about a billion Islamic people mm. tracking the week in a different way. Mm. Why would the adversary do that? Yeah, you know, but the actual Hebrew the the real true Sabbath that's written in the scriptures and the record of scripture, mm. it's right there. In fact, there's there's all these other cultures that in their language have the word Sabbath as a root. Like for example, the word Sabbath or Shabbat is is in other languages Sabo or Sabado or mm. Sabuta mm. and Shubuta. And other languages, you know, there's uh, so over 200 of them mm. that have this strange thing about them. And even if, even if one man long ago, any somewhere, wanted to change that day, mm. then how is he going to affect all these Aboriginal tribes and all these cultures everywhere when it's impossible? And Rome tried to do that, the, yeah. the, the change of the week, and they yeah. failed. Yeah. You know, anybody that tries to change it is going to be severely injured because it's not going to work. You know, what Yahuwah has made straight, no one can bend. Mm. You know, and if, if Yahuwah bends it, mm. nobody can straighten it. It can't be fixed by anyone, uh, no matter how much power they have. The Roman Empire certainly had more, more power than, than Israel at any time, really, you know, I mean, it, it, it was more powerful than Israel was when he, in its heyday, but it's, it was larger, and it never could change that weekly pattern. Mm. Uh, so for those, you can't find uh, anything to yeah. point to, you know. Mm. So for those who are listening to this who really don't know much about the lunar Sabbath, um, uh, the Sabbath that's put forth in Scripture as a day of rest every seventh day, uh, illustrated by the manna, that's Yahuwah's Sabbath. A lunar Sabbath is where they they think that every is it every full moon is a new Sabbath. Is that so? Every time you see a full moon. Well, so you know, there's three or at least three different lunar Sabbath uh, ways of doing it, yeah. and I don't know what they call themselves. I don't. I guess they have differentiations. But mm. if you get into the lunar Sabbath thing, there's going to be two other peoples. Uh, groups that are going to argue with you. It's yeah. kind of like being a, if you were to convert to Islam yeah. and you were a Sunni, yeah. you know, then the, then the Shiites would be coming after you yeah. and saying, wait a minute, you can't be that. Yeah. Uh, you know, what, what is all that about? You know, mm. so, you know, you can't just go become a lunar Sabbath person and then say, well, this is it, you know, because yeah. see, there's other lunar Sabbath people that are mm. just as sure that are doing it differently than you are. Yes. You know, but yeah. we are, we have to play this thing like we're musicians and we're, we, we see that there's seven notes in the scale and mm -hmm. we're going to all be in the same pitch and we're going to keep the number of beats. We're going to play this thing like it's been played. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, you have created it, you know, mm -hmm. and the creation week is right in the, 
scriptures. All you have to do is go to the first book and look at it and say, well, do we find eight days here? And do we find anything about the moon involved? You know, the moon is just a created item. It isn't mentioned as being anything that influences the week. Because see, the week was here before the moon was. Yes. So the moon was created on the fourth day mm. and the sun and the stars. But the, the first day of the week was actually came into being yeah. uh, and then the second day and the third day. So the week actually started before these things even appear. So the, uh, yeah. the one is more important than the other, you know, so you, yeah. your foundation is being laid and you can't say, well, the moon's going to affect that, you know, mm. yeah. it's just, it's, it's just insane. It's madness. Yeah. So do you yeah. think, do you think the days of creation were 24 hour days as we sort of do it now? Has a day, has a day as I read scripture, hours? I, there's people that, that believe that the flood wasn't global. There's people that say that creation days were a thousand years. Uh, but you see, I just take it as what it is, and I believe that it was uh, what it says it is. Mr. You know, Ockham. Mr. Ockham. Basically a 24-hour day. Because you see, in fact, it was 24 hours. It wasn't 12 hours. or yeah. It was... There was uh, there was darkness, and then he created, uh, he, you know, the first day uh, out of that darkness, at some point during the day, light was created. Now, we don't know that that's the physical thing that we are the, you know, the thing that we call the light energy. I think it, it was, but it was also a metaphoric thing that there was a higher level interpretation that there was chaos and darkness. Some, some have said that light was Yahusha, haven't they? Yes. In fact, I think that, um, that that aspect is very true. So we've got Torah being created, or truth, uh, coming out of error, you know, in chaos. But um, this, this whole Lunar Sabbath thing is a, a tendency to, it, it thinks it's tracking order, but it's actually tracking chaos. Mm. Yes. And, uh, because every, if everything's moving and, and shifting, and one of the things that really is hard for the lunar Sabbath or to deal with is in uh, Leviticus or Waipra chapter 23 where he says to count for yourselves seven complete weeks mm -hmm. seven perfect weeks and he says yeah and then he, he, to, in the count to Shabuoth mm -hmm. or Pentecost as the Christians call it and in that seven weeks we have exactly 49 days because he says up to the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, yeah. fifty days. Yeah. So you've got your fifty days, mm -hmm. and you so you you start at at the morrow after the Sabbath, and then you count for yourself seven complete weeks, and then that's forty nine because seven times seven is forty nine. Yes. Yeah. And then up to the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, fifty days. So now a lunar, yeah. lunar Sabbath there will reach seven Sabbaths after thirty seven days. So that's what seven, seven full moons would it be? That'd be seven months. Or well, something, because there's going to be two new moons in that same in that period somewhere. Ah, okay. If you've got a fifty day period, there's going to be two new moons dancing around in the in that framework. Yeah. So in that case, they're going to move their week around. See, yeah. and then there's going to be se there's going to be seven Sabbaths within thirty seven days. And it makes for it, a it makes it impossible for people to understand. When are we supposed to do the Sabbath? <laughs> Just tell us when to do it. <laughs> it's impossible. I don't know what that's about. I mean, and then there's going to be two other groups of Sabbath, Lunar Sabbath people that yeah. are going to be saying, no, you've got it wrong. The new moon is a Sabbath, or it's not a Sabbath, or the first day of the hmm. month is just, you know, nothing. There's one of them that says it's nothing. <laughs> and then you've got a starting on the second day is the first day of the week. You know, yeah. It's really hard to track. Yeah. And you have you can't find scripture on it at all, no, you know. No. <laughs> and they think, well, it's just gonna, you just got to dig, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, oh no. Dear. So it's just so easy. The enemy's after the the Sabbath, the pattern of the Sabbath, isn't it? The sign. Well, of and the, he really wants to destroy people. You sign the sign of our covenant. And, he doesn't, and to create division, you know. Yeah. See, division is what his goal is. And mm -hmm. If he can get people. To not love one another, mm. then that's 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 really a 
Yeah. How could two agree? If two don't agree, they yeah. can't walk together. You know. No. So no. people don't seem to understand that the early emissaries were in one mind. I mean, you hear they had little spats here and there, little disagreements, but they were they followed the same teacher. They had the same names. They had they were walking with one mind, and he was Yahushua was always trying to get his followers and and the disciples were always trying to get them to come into one mind and. Even yeah. the even the nuts are in these days can't seem to agree on anything, can they? And they're coming at you with shotguns because you're declaring stuff, and you know they're it's uh it's amazing, isn't it? It is, and I I, I don't I try to not make fun of anyone, yeah, or criticize anyone personally at all. But if you want to sh uh, hold up a teaching and then show it to me in scripture, that's not a problem either. But uh, you know, if we have to wear um, hats or something, you know, uh, I'm not seeing that in Scripture either. You know, Mo like Moshe, or Moses as they call him, uh, he's not uh, aware of any Torah about wearing, putting on hats. No. You know, if anybody yeah. wants to put a hat on that, or a hood or, yeah. or a thing over their head, that's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that we, if, if a, a person from those days, say two to two and a half thousand years ago, looked at one of us, they'd probably want to dress like we do. And say, look at those guys. <laughs> hey, that's smart. Well, let's, let's do that because that's what the Nazarene are doing. Trendy. Well, <laughs> you know, no, why, are we supposed to copy uh, our clothing? Yeah. You know, yeah. You know well, Music. we can do that. Music. Yeah. It is harmful. Music's a big one, isn't it? You can't use those instruments. They're pagan. They're satanic instruments. Yeah. What are we supposed to have? Harps? You or something? can't have guitars. You can you can have that saxophone though. That's okay. Well, <laughs> there, there's so many things. Well, the harp is actually in a. I think the harp evolved into a guitar. Yeah. You know, I mean, this thing right here, this thing is really a harp. Yeah. And uh, that's all it is. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That's all it is. Yeah. Nice. But. Uh, yeah, and uh, we just have to find a way to overcome the divisions. Uh, the moon thing, though, is so serious. Yeah, uh, they they read things into the scripture because they're taking baggage in and they're pulling things out that are not really teaching what they say. Mm -hmm. They're just imagining that it's teaching that, or they're inferring mm -hmm. something. Yeah, uh, close this gate on the new moon, and uh, well, that's for the. Ceremonial people, you know, the the, the priesthood, uh, people that lived a uh, hundred miles away, they weren't showing up at the gate, you know. So it's not like there was anything going on. He didn't say everybody rest on the new moon. Mm -hmm. There was one new moon that had a re they have to rest. That's the first day of the seventh month. Mm -hmm. But the others by the trumpets of the very fact. That is it trumpets? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yom Teruah, yeah. trumpets. And mm -hmm. Yom Teruah is this first day of the seventh month. And, mm -hmm. and by deduction, if he has to tell us that we have to rest mm -hmm. from our work on the first day of the seventh month, then th by deduction, we know that the other first uh, 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 new moons, we don't. Yeah. Because if he has to say to rest on that one, yeah. it, and now if he said to rest on every new moon, he could very easily say that. Yeah. That's in his vocabulary. Yeah. He's able to do that. He can do that. Yeah. He can do it. Yeah. Just like snap his finger and it's done. Yeah. But you see, uh, no prophet ever wrote that down. No. But he did write down that we're to rest on the first day of the seventh month. And mm -hmm. by deduction, you, we don't have to rest on the other new moons. Yeah. Now, the, the priesthood was told to do certain things every new moon. Mm -hmm. But that was the ceremonial mm -hmm. thing that were shadows of things that... Mm. We may not even know right now, but we, yeah. we may have later. Mm. Wow. wow. <laughs> Isn't it amazing what they do? Yeah. So, yeah. So, so another thing we were going to discuss is the fact that, and you touched on it briefly, is that a new moon is at zero point. You don't start counting from one, You, you or, or how do you say it? You don't start building, you start building from zero. So a new moon is is darkness it's not a sliver um, so if you've already got the sliver you probably you're probably up to day the first day then aren't you or the second day you're not at you're not at the, a new moon because you can't see a new moon 
Well, that's exactly right, because if you're in Psalm 68, I believe it is, it says, Blow the shofar in the new moon and in the full moon, the day of our festival. Mm. Now, the full moon is a full moon. It's not like almost full or yeah. past full. Mm. It's actually full. Mm. And I was, when I first came into the faith, I was studying the uh, writings of men, and I was seeing them saying the crescent moon. And for about three years, I was seeing the crescent moon at sunset. And I thought, well, there it is. That's what they saw. That's what they, they're saying is the new moon. And then on my count to the 15th, I was one day past full moon. The mm -hmm. full moon happened on the 14th. Mm -hmm. And then the four, by the 15th, on my count, the moon was starting to shrink. Yeah, It had lost the amount of light that I had started with. Now, that was a logical problem for me because I saw the scripture that said, blow the shofar in the new moon and the full moon the day of our festival. So he's talking about the seventh month, of course. Mm -hmm. Now, you're blowing a shofar only in one t at one point when you're commanded to, and yeah. that is on the seventh month, mm -hmm. in the first day of the seventh month. So the 15th would have been a full moon, and of course that's the first day of Shavuot. Mm -hmm. uh, no, Tabernacles. Yeah. 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 Uh, Sukkot. 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 Yeah. I had shop on my mat. Now, here's the thing, though. If you have a stopwatch and you start the stopwatch and you count as soon as the thing starts with one, yeah. then that's where your mistake is. Because you don't start with one You, if you're counting seconds. Mm. You start with zero. Mm. You start with zero, one, See, mm -hmm. that, that span of time is one yeah. second. Yeah. That is where the error really lies. See, mm -hmm. in, in many ancient cultures, didn't even have a zero. But mm -hmm. today, people are so mathematically challenged, that, and yeah. they don't know how the operation of the planets work. And, yeah. uh, you know, they, they understand day and night, but they don't really get the moon. Mm -hmm. And they don't know what, what it's doing or how it's acting. But uh, anyway, what we have there is... We have people seeing this crescent, and they're saying, this is the beginning of the first day. Mm. So they say, and then, the mo and then the next day will be another day. But they're not starting at the zero point. Mm. See, the zero point is the actual new moon. They're looking at the end of the first day. Mm. When they see the crescent, they have, they're actually at one, mm. but they are not at zero. If they were at zero, then they would see the crescent moon and they would be off like I had been for those three years. Yeah. You see, you understand the logic, though? Yeah. So on the surface, it kind of looks like an innocent mistake. And oh, you, you, you who understands, as long as we get to it eventually. Oh, yeah. But if you look at the, um, if you look at, at uh, the teachings and beliefs of the pagan cultures, you realize that the crescent moon has been put forward as uh, is it their moon deity? That's how they worship. They used to worship the moon. So then you start saying, "Ah, oh, maybe this has been done on purpose." It's not. It's, um, people might be innocent, but this belief has been put forth. It's not so innocent after all. Satan's in there again, trying to steal some worship, isn't he? Well, you know, it's interesting that you brought that up because the Islamic people uh, they started. Well, the the actual hospitality tribe of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the hospitality tribe of Muhammad. Yeah. Muhammad's family was the hospitality tribe. Yeah. And the the people who would come to Mecca to worship the deities that were in this box yeah. were uh, worshiping their family deity. Now, the yeah. Muhammad's family deity was this A-L-L-A-H deity Daddy. represented by the crescent moon. Daddy. You know, yeah. So the moon deity, A-L-L-A-H, was symbol of this crescent moon. Yeah. And if we use a crescent moon to yeah. go it by anything, mm. then we have uh, a, an alignment with their understandings, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, they, so the moon is involved. Excuse me one second, brother. Boys, yeah. can you go and ask mommy and she'll get it for you? Josiah? I'm just, I just need it to be quiet right now, that's all. Go to mommy, she's got some stuff for you. Uh, That's awesome. It's not a problem. Door, can you shut the door for me? It's okay. You're not wrong. It's okay. 
<laughs> Diesel up here. All right. Okay. All right. They love their dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I forgot what were we talking about. Uh, giving, well, giving, we were, we were talking a... about the crescent moon mm. and the fact that uh, Islam had used this symbol and still uses it mm. as an echo. I mean, how else? What else would this crescent moon be doing yeah. in Islam? You know, yes. what does it represent? You know, mm. it's because the moon deity of that family was this deity, A L L A H, mm. and that was their emblem for him. And of mm. course, there's pictures on the internet. You can see the moon deity has this. Crescent moon on its chest. Yeah. It's a, it's an idol. You know. Yeah. Wow. I might have to pick some up for uh, <laughs> that store. No, I'm I don't buy those things. No, no. I buy them. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just shifting through your notes to see if we've covered most of the stuff. It's been wonderful just getting yeah. a, a flow on. Yeah, we covered the new moon, the full moon, festival days. The moon G.I.D. from all four sides, yep. Yeah. Crescent moon carving, yep. Yeah, because yeah, they wear those, um, the red fez with the Islamic sword and the crescent on it too, don't they? To give honor to the... Yes. And of course it's adopted by a lot of masons and their mm. symbols. Yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, there's the Pope. He's got his, um, what's it called, the monstrance? Uh, oh, it's under, yeah, there's a crescent moon under the monstrance uh, where the host of heaven is. Yep. And then we've got, oh, the H host of and then we've got Hinduism as well, S H I V A, moon deity. Oh. Yeah, I think we've covered most of this. That's brilliant. I was going to ask you, um, we talked about a couple of days ago uh, about putting the um, commandments on our doorpost, and um, uh, we also understand that uh, we wear. Um, Zitzith as well. How do you know, as a right. new as a new believer who's trying not to get influenced too much by outward, uh, even if it's not religious, just outward opinions? How do you know yeah. which things in the scripture were just cultural, and which things uh, are everlasting? Do you actually look for the words "this is an everlasting uh, thing, do it forever," or is there sort of easy way to understand? Oh, that. That's been, because they always say, oh, it's, it's, you do Passover, oh, you're Jewish, are you? You do Sabbath, oh, you're Jewish, are you? You know, no, we're just looking at what the scripture well, says to do. So, we, but we don't know. We could be a mix of uh, various tribes. I mean, there's probably a lot, uh, some of the Jewish or Yahudim and, and yeah. uh, many people, but, you know, we're, we're all out, out there. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't know really who we are, but uh, if you do a DNA test, uh, that's not going to really help you much anyway, because that's... <laughs> going by some ideas that people had about it, but the thing of it, uh, the thing of it is, when I read scripture and I see a commandment in there to do something to remind me of Torah, like wear seat seats. Hmm. Uh, whenever I go out, I just had a shower, so I'm not wearing mine right now. I'm not going out. It's Sabbath, yeah. and um, but I, I almost every every even when I'm in my house, I usually wear them, yeah. and I have uh, these little loops, and I just pass them through my belt loops, and what they are, they're just sort of strings, yeah. and one of the strings is blue, mm. as long as, and you can have it mixed with white or, or purple or green, but if you've got a blue thread, then, you know, you can just uh, look at it, and when you're uh, out in the world, and, you know, you're looking down to get your keys or something, you see that blue cord, and you go, the Torah. You know, it's a good reminder. It's like tying a, 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 a ribbon around your finger to remind you of something. Yeah. You know, I, I don't want to forget this. This is very important. Uh, whatever it is, yeah. an appointment or uh, a child in the back seat you don't want to leave there. You know, yeah, yeah. like you're yeah. going, you're so busy. People are, uh, their children are getting cooked in the car yes. because they're leaving them in the yeah. car. Mm. Yeah. Well, anyway, the uh, remembering the Torah is a very important thing, mm. and we're completely different from most people in the fact that we want to obey. Yes, and it's all because he's he's made it that way. Yahusha mm. has circumcised our hearts to make mm. us desire to obey. So mm. I always uh, feel like we need to uh, to, to do that. Mm. Now, if if you want to uh, tie things around your arm. That's okay too, but he said that they will be a sign on your hand 
mm. on your right hand mm. and as and as frontlets between your eyes mm. as frontlets now mm. it doesn't mean literally it, it, i mean it can but it but it but it, uh, he wants it to be in your in your forehead in mm. your forehead you know mm. and that's uh, in your mind and and on your hand would emblem it would be a an idea of having your actions producing evidence of the fact that the Torah is guiding your your actions. Mm. So yeah, in your head and on your hand. So you've got thought and action. You know, yeah. the people want to yeah. you know, imp you know, interpret that differently. Um, so I don't know that Yahusha wore them. He did. I don't see any text where it says that Yahusha lifted up his hands and fastened the phylactery to his head. I don't hear that, but uh, we know he didn't he, condemn it. We know, you know he, wore, he didn't We know he wore the zitzit, though, don't we? Because the, the we do know that he wore zitzit because yes. the woman touched it. Mm. The woman touched the tassels that were hanging at the fringes of his garment, mm. and she saw that, and she's in, in her heart. She mm. didn't even in her thoughts. She was just saying, "If I could only do that." Then maybe, uh, well, not maybe. He, she had faith. She yeah. she believed that that would heal her yeah, because of who right. he is. Mm. You know. So for those of us who have to wear, or people who have to wear a uniform or things to work and stuff like that, you could um, like we put them on a piece of elastic and put it around our waist, and um, you know, sometimes we tuck it in, or sometimes we wear it. You can do things like that too. It's it's not. Uh, a yeah. Pharise it's not a Pharisaical look how big my tassels are, is it? <laughs> it's a, it's a, a personal reminder to you of... Yeah, anything that you do personally is even more special in his mind, I'm sure. Mm. Not that you're changing it, but that you're yeah. doing it to work for you to remember the Torah. Mm. Because if you're standing before the throne of the universe and, and in your resurrected body and he says, you were keeping my commandments, weren't you? And you, we say, yes, Master, we were, and I loved your commandments, and I want to learn more about them. Mm. Then, uh, you know, he's going to say, are you wearing seat seats? <laughs> yes, I was wearing them when I died. <laughs> yeah. uh, I was wearing them in the hospital bed or I, <laughs> wherever I was. Yeah. And uh, anyway, uh, yeah. he's going to say, enter into the joy of your Master. You know, you're a, you're uh, a legal somebody else walked up and said, you're a legalist. Seat <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. uh, he, he's going to say, "Did you keep my commandments?" And then uh, they'll say, "Well, I didn't have to. I just uh, believed that you kept the commandments, and I had faith in you." And uh, he, he's going to say, "Well, how do you feel about my commandments?" Oh, they're legalistic. Really? <laughs> you know, uh, I, if I if I even tried to keep those things, I'd be trying to prove that. Uh, I, I would be finding salvation by keeping them. Yeah. And that's not it at all, you know. No. But no. people say that, you know. Yeah. It, it's the it's the lawlessness. Yeah. But uh, well, I can't uh, I can't argue with it because I understand it. I mean I was one of them. Yeah. You know, yeah. I saw that sign and yeah. but then he changed me. He said, yeah. No, I'm gonna have you. I'm gonna, and I felt it when it happened, you know. Yeah. Because I, I was sitting there, and I, I don't remember exactly what was going on, but I was having a conversation with a brother, and he asked me a simple question. Mm -hmm. I, he said, Lou, do you love the commandments? You know, and I, uh, I said, I don't, but I want to. Mm -hmm. And then I was nailed. <laughs> he got yeah. I was pierced. I felt like something happened deep inside me. And I went, what? You know, and that was, it was over. Yeah. I had crossed through a veil. Uh, mm. And I wasn't able to go back because mm. I'd never be able to go back and say, no, I don't think I really want them. Yeah. Or I don't want to yeah. love them. But yeah. I love the commandments. Mm. And yeah. I want to yeah. share that with others. You see, if you share the commandments with others, yeah. It, it's what we're supposed to do. Yeah. But how do you get them to want to love the commandments? You yeah. can't. No. It takes him. Yeah. And then they, then, they, then he has them. You've got to remove yeah. the, thing, the things from their eyes, wake them up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's how you look at it. Yeah. 
Yeah. And we, we want to stop looking at it from our perspective mm. and look at it from his mind and what he really wants from his point of view. If you could just think of going into his mind and saying, what do you really want? It would always be consistent what he's always said. Guard my commandments. Yeah. Shamar, you know, yeah. my Torah. Yeah. Know? Yeah. And uh, I, I can't argue with that, you know, no. because that's the truth, you know, and, and it's always going to be true. And we understand that we are, are not, we're not delivered by how wonderful we are and how obedient and how, that's not why he delivered us. We did, he, we, we're delivered because he loves us, but how do we respond to that? Do we just, oh, great, we're, yeah, great, we'll go do what we want. That's, yes, it's, a, it's the response. So we understand when they say, look, we're not saved by works. Well, no, but, you know. But the not. works perfects the faith. See, the, mm -hmm. the belief it alone does not do anything. It's mm -hmm. the belief plus the works that the works actually, you know, like Jacob or James yeah. tells us, it, it, it uh, perfects the work. So you've got a serious thing. And, you know, he says, uh, mm -hmm. you show me what you believe or tell me what you believe and I'll show you what I believe. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. that's really what he was saying. Yeah. He wants a close marriage relationship with us, doesn't yeah. he? I mean, because, you know, he said uh, even the demons believed. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. they have doubt. No. They were, they were alive and present yeah. watching. You know, yeah. they don't have any doubt. No. Uh, and we have uh, faith and belief. Mm. But you see, in the Hebrew idea of faith is enuma. And it means to not only think and believe something, but to also act upon it. Yeah. So it involves action. Yeah. And uh, so the process of obedience yeah. involves more than just thinking something, you know. Mm. So. Well, this is amazing, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. What's it got to do with the moon? <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. I'd like to know. I, yeah. don't, I don't see the moon in that, you know. Yeah. I wanted to, the I lunar wanted Sabbath, to... it's not in the scriptures. No. I was going to yeah. say to you, for, for those of us who. Uh, uh, are newer at all this Nazarene walk. Uh, are you the sort of person who, uh, I know you love, I was going to say astrology. Is it astro an astronomy? Which is the pagan one? Oh, cosmology, cosmology, the study yeah. of the universe. Yeah. So does, yeah. That mean, does, I'm that, so does that mean you've got a telescope and you're sussing out the moon and you go out each night and see where the moon's up to or do you do it online? Because <laughs> we just go, when's the feast? Check out, check out Lou's calendar. He's worked it all out. And that's 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 great, but um, if 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 that disappeared one day, how would we work out? You just look for the 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 new moon, which is darkness, and count to fifteen. Is that right? Well, we can't find the moon unless we have some technology to find the new moon because it's uh, between the sun and the earth. So, mm -hmm. but when I was a paper boy, I realized what was happening with the moon even a, as a young boy, you know, 13, 14 years old, I was up before the sun came up and I'd see the crescent moon. The crescent would be on the left side of the moon. And I saw that and I thought, how odd. And then the sun would come up slowly and then the moon would disappear. And then the next morning, I didn't see the moon at all because, of course, the moon tra was traveling in front of the sun. And uh, that's how we get eclipses or lunar, oh. you know, or solar eclipses. Yeah. The, sol the solar eclipse occurs because the moon is new mm. and it's aligned perfectly between the sun and the earth. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, and then the next night at sunset, you might see a crescent, you know. And you've missed it. <laughs> and you might miss the new moon, but what you do know is that the first day is complete yeah. and then the second day and it's very important to know uh, which moon it is because we have to track that uh, by number mm. you know the month shouldn't have names you know mm. except the first one does have a name uh, Abib mm. but uh, we would we only call it the first month you know yeah. and then the second month third month and uh, of course in the first month we've got to pay attention and then in the, in the seventh month, we have things to watch. And then in the midst of that, we've got to count weeks, complete weeks, not just pieces of seven days, but actual real weeks. 
perfect weeks. Mm -hmm. And then the morrow after the seventh Sabbath from the day after the uh, the uh, weekly Sabbath within matzah, we've mm -hmm. got to count seven complete Sabbaths to the morrow after that. And then that first day of the week will be Shavuot. Mm -hmm. So we need to do that for in order for us to see that pattern. But we also have to understand, too, that these are just shadows of a redemption plan, and mm -hmm. there's a meaning in each one of them, you know. Mm -hmm. So if we get really argumentative about when it is, and uh, mm -hmm. we miss the whole point about what it is. That's you Yahusha. Know, <laughs> yeah, it's Yahusha's redemption plan. Nothing yeah. we can do can change mm -hmm. uh, our salvation, except that we decide to throw up our hands and say, well, I give up, I'm not going to try to uh, I'm not going to be a participant in this. Mm -hmm. We have to be a participant, you know. Mm -hmm. We're his wife, yeah. you know. And yeah. a wife has to re respond to her husband. Yeah. Her husband tells her tells her to do something, which we are. We're Israel, if mm -hmm. we're immersed. And we comply with mm -hmm. his requests. Yeah. And they're not yeah. difficult. They're not difficult. No. They're very right. simple. Yeah. So, uh and we don't make it, he didn't make it complicated. He yeah. he used manna to explain, to show it to him. And that wasn't the first time that the week existed. The week was going on. They just yeah. didn't know where it was. Yeah. And then he showed them where it was. Mm -hmm. And then they kept that pulse. And they kept it all the way through until mm -hmm. Yahushua's day. And Yahushua didn't say, wait a minute, you guys have got the wrong day. And he would just say, you know, he yeah. would have said, Hey, you know, yeah. a week is all messed up. We're going to have to reboot this, yeah. uh, store that. But he yeah. didn't. And then mm -hmm. ever since his death, the entire world was keeping the same week yeah. all through the time. It never changed. And if anything ever did, then they would be freaks. And yeah. everybody would remember that. Hey, let's write that down. That's weird. Dude. There's some strange people over here that are doing something <laughs> odd. Well, yeah. actually, that's happening now. Yeah. With the lunar Sabbath people, when the when the freaky Romans started messing with things, yeah. hey, we're gonna have to write that down. We wrote that down, and the rest of the world was going, like, "What?" And <laughs> you know, yeah. and then yeah. finally, Rome said, "Oh well, that's not gonna work." You know, but they couldn't get the whole world to follow them. Yeah. Oh, the dragon would have liked that, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. the thing of it is, it never really worked. You yeah. know. Mm -hmm. And if anybody ever did, we would have known about it, you know. Yeah. But since Yahushua's been here, they, he was in compliance with exactly what we see around us now, you know. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So if, we are, if we're just constantly arguing about dates and figures, and yeah. we're going to be yeah. missing. Oh. One of the things that I mentioned, though, is yeah. that I believe that Yahushua, and I don't think he would agree with where the international mm -hmm. date line is, but I think he winks at that and says, well, it's a human convention. Yeah. It's just a human convention. And a, and a human convention is uh, something somebody made up. But yeah. I think he works with people within those boundaries. Yeah. And I don't think that it's a big problem with him. So if somebody says the international dateline is in a certain place and the great circle, which produces the prime meridian on the other side, well... I think that he'll work with us on that. You know, not that we won't see changes when he comes back, because he'll probably shift things somewhere, you know, mm -hmm. so that the prime meridian or the international date line will move. <laughs> I think the prime meridian is probably going to be through Jerusalem. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I could be wrong, but I don't think that he, he's likely to change a few things. And what difference does the prime meridian make when you're looking at the moon? Well, the moon isn't tied to that. The moon is not geared to the Earth's rotation at all. No. That's just it. It's not. It, no. When the new moon happens, it happens for the entire planet Yeah. at the same, at the same time. Mm. It doesn't happen, oh, the new moon's not here yet for us. Oh, it is there for you? Oh, good. Well, oh, that's no. what you're saying. I see. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. The international date line is, a, is where the day begins. Okay. You know. Great. Yes, that's for what the, I'm talking about. For, for those daft among us. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. So when, uh, just going back, when uh, you were talking about the first month, Abib, um, why do they, if that's the first month, and that's that's when they came out of, of Israel and he said this is the first month. And, um, right. 
why do I often hear, uh, I think it might have been in your articles, you say the the seventh month and what I, that was the, the, the beginning of the year for them. Is that right? Not the seventh month, no. no? The, the first month. And, yeah. of course, that has that's for the whole planet. It's yeah. northern yeah. and southern hemispheres. Because okay. uh, when they came out, mm. it was... It was uh, mm. springtime for them yeah. in the northern hemisphere, and of course, it would have been an autumn for the southern hemisphere at that time. So the whole planet has to, uh, you know, oblige the fact that that's the moon, mm. that you know that's the first month of the year, and so as the years pass, the southern and northern hemispheres have to recognize that. Mm. Uh, some there are people that are on the other side that. They, they, they observe it in their spring. Hmm. You know, there's those group, groups too. That's a completely different problem. Yes. You know, hmm. but there are people that do that. Yes. And uh, I try to explain to people that when the moon happened for them, when they came out of Egypt, uh, wherever it was, it was for the whole planet. It wasn't yes. for some of the people differently on other parts of it or up and down. No. You know, no. it was the whole planet. And every time there's a new moon, the moon comes between the earth and the sun, and it's for the whole planet at the same time. It isn't different times. It doesn't matter what time it is on the earth. It, it's a matter of where the moon is relative to the sun. Yeah. And that's its own thing. It's not geared to anything we're doing. We can be spinning around any way we want, and the moon is tracking its own path, you know. But uh, it's, not, it's not geared. There's no gears, you know. No. They'd like it to be. In yes. fact, that's where we get all that stuff. Back in the days of Galileo and Copernicus uh, and the Inquisition and Cardinal Bellarmine and all those guys, in the 1700s and 1500s and so forth, the, the uh, Roman Catholic circus actually believed that the earth was flat. Yeah. And they insisted on it being a fixed, flat surface. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I don't know if they imagined it to be a disc or a square, but, you know, they didn't really know. But the fact is, they did not want to hear that it was a sphere, and they didn't want to hear that the sun was going, that it was going around the sun, you know. The sun was going up and down and up and down to them, and that's all they needed to know. And they were roasting people at the stake, that, or tried to roast uh, Galileo for that, you know, but he recanted and said, well, I, I don't want to die for this, so, you know, let me just... <laughs> can't and uh, anyway the fact is though uh, that's 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 the kind of thing that was going on and it's not so far off from what we're dealing with here but uh, if they were trying to change the week back then then uh, we still we see a chaotic mix-up in the world mm. not that the whole world would be doing that one thing mm. but the, th the fact is there would be people doing certain weird things and then other people doing the correct things and people would have to decide which one was right, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but there was a, there, this confusion that's going on right now is mm -hmm. just part of one of the indications of the end times. Yeah. You know? That's all it is. Mm -hmm. And if you get mm -hmm. carried away by these winds of doctrines, it's mm -hmm. because you don't have your... You're, you're, you're not rooted in the Torah, you know. Mm. You're not standing on the Torah. Yeah. But, um, so we're dealing, with, we're dealing with yet another group of people who are trying to prove that the Scripture, the, prove, prove the valid, valid, what's the word? Invalid, they, in, they, they are invalidating the Scripture again. You've got evolutionists invalidating what Yahuwah has said. You've got humanists yeah. invalidating what Yahuwah has said. Yeah. Uh, and you know, the, list, the, list, the list goes on, people that are doing it. You know, the scientists are invalidating what Yahuwah says. Everybody's trying to invalidate, and we know it's the dragon, don't we? Yes, it is. Mm. So uh, that's the big deal. With the, that's why the Lunar Sabbath is a big deal. Because when I first heard about it, I thought, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. And then you kept going on and on and on and on about it. I thought, why? I, start, I might start looking into this. Why is it such a big deal? Why does Luke keep going on about it? Well, this is why, because yes. it, it, it's taken people away, and all they need to do, you know, people who have been feeding off a lot of the teachings you've been getting from Yahusha, uh, mm -hmm. and are getting the word, and they're they're waking up to things. This lunar Sabbath things comes along. All, all a lot of them have to do is say a few bad things about you, and people are gone. 
<laughs> you know? Yeah. It drifted off. Well, here's it. another aspect of it is um, mm. when you get involved with a lunar Sabbath person, mm. uh, all you hear is that. That's the only thing you get. And that's, yeah. the, that's the thing that they're most important about. They're not teaching the teachings of Yahusha and the love and, and, and how to get along with people and, and how to, you know, work with the government. And, you know, he, he explained a lot of that stuff. Mm. You know, all they really want to talk about is the calculations that they use to find out where the Sabbath is. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they spend so much time on that. That there's no time left for anything else. And so I'm spending a little bit of time to explain that this is an error, and then I'm going to move on to something else. You're not going to be a clanging symbol. You're not going to be a clanging symbol <laughs> like that. I, I can't stand there and, and just harp on one thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to move on, and I'm going to just say, well, you know, if you don't get it, then you've got to just keep studying until you do mm. and watch for the evidences of yeah. what the, the fruit of the tree. Yeah. If the fruit of the tree, I mean, I, I love the lunar Sabbath people, yeah. but the doctrine itself is not real. It's something that's just made up. Yeah. It didn't exist uh, 20 years ago, you know. It's just something new. It's really fresh, isn't it? It's very fresh. If you can find it in the scriptures, it would be very old. Yeah. You know. Wow. And uh, not only that, but you would be, uh, if you did find it in there, what you're really getting is a, uh, an eisegesis situation. You're not learning. You're making something say something that it's not saying, you know. Yeah. But, uh, and you think we should keep it simple and uh, you should read it literal. If it says, stand up and walk around the chair, you should stand up and walk around the chair. And then if there's a deeper meaning exactly. to that, you may not find if out. If it says deep... that, then we should just do that. Yeah. And you might find uh -huh. out what that you might find out what the deeper meaning is to walking around the chair while you're doing it. While you're doing it, you'll learn. Yeah, you'll say, yeah. Oh, I get it now. It's I've got a, a little hidden meaning in there, but yeah, mm. whatever the commandment is, mm. the Ten Commandments are to mm. be not just studied but practiced. And yeah. of course people don't need to study them. So yeah. When we, when we have our seminars, we always open up with that first thing. It's a very simple first thing. And then, uh, then we move on to the subject. Yeah. And uh, it's, yeah. Very, it's, it's that important, yeah. you know, yeah. because we're... Your wedding vows. In fact, I want to share this, too, the fact mm -hmm. that I, when I was wondering why did he make the tzitzit commandment involve a blue cord? Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, now blue is the color of... The sa blue sapphire of his of his throne, you know the pavement, and I thought, well, this is a legal area, you know, and le legality is associated with the color blue, and even a lot of police officers uh, uh -huh. wear blue. Yeah. The boys in blue, you know, yeah. they're they're the law, you know, yeah. they're the instructions, and if you get outside the instructions, then they're going to come over and say, uh, I think you're a little bit aberrant here. You're going to have to fix yourself up here. Uh, come with me. <laughs> License <laughs> and, and registration. <laughs> because you're chaotic. Yeah. You're outside the boundaries. You know. Yeah. If, if you stay within the boundaries of the commandments, yeah. then your walk is going to be straight and narrow. It's not going to be flopping all over the place in the darkness and the shadows. Stay in Torah Just zone. In, in the Torah zone. <laughs> where the light is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Protect it if you're in the Torah zone. Just mm. give it a check, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's amazing, brother. I think I've got enough stuff there. Oh, good, good. Okay. If, if more stuff comes up, I'll um, I'll throw it at you another time. Yeah, if you have a question or something, you know. Yeah, yeah. This is much better than me trying to go through all your study and then try and summarize it. <laughs> well, yeah. There'll be yeah. some things that'll pop out, but, yeah. uh, you know. Mm. Um, I hope you can find some uh, really interesting, juicy pictures. Yeah, I yeah. love the video that you've already put together. The, you know, the commercial. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's very nice. Oh, the one with the one with Wolverine in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I never was, saw that movie, but uh, oh. I saw bits and pieces. Bits and pieces. Yeah, that's brilliant. All right. Well, you yeah. have a good Sabbath. Yeah, you too, mate. It's lovely to see, see you again. Hello, everybody. Will do. Okay.
I'll catch you, uh, if I don't speak to you, I'll catch you uh, next week. Yeah, well, let's do it again. Uh, we, yeah. we do it on the, uh, on, on the fifth day yep. in the morning for me yep. at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock? Or 7, 7, seven, seven o'clock. 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I'm so sleepy. You know, I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm, I, I make these mistakes, and, hmm. I, and I'm uh, because I'm not really awake. But That's right. so we'll see. You, we'll see you then. Yeah, wonderful. Love okay. you, brother. See you later. Love you. Bye bye. Bye bye. So, brother, as I've been putting this doco together, I've had the opinion in the back of my mind that the Lunar Sabbath is evil. It's against Torah and the people are just all crazy. They're the ones that have been attacking you, all these negative feelings I've had against them. But today, as I was searching through YouTube, I was just shocked to discover that a lot of the people promoting the Lunar Sabbath are actually genuine believers of Yahusha, but they've just grabbed hold of this insane theory and they've found all these scriptures to apparently prove it, and they genuinely think they're writing a wrong in the body. But no matter how Hellenized or paganized the true Hebrew calendar became throughout history, you know, by people like Alexander the Great or Emperor Constantine, it does not take away the fact that the earth has always been moving in a seven-day week pattern. No matter what happened to the calendar, Greco... Roman, Hebrew, it has always been a seventh day Sabbath and it always will be, won't it? That's very good. In fact, it's segueing right into some of the uh, material that I worked with in this last seminar. Mm. It's the heartbeat of creation mm. and I deal with a lot of the nuances of the real week mm. and uh, that's really great. That would work really well. That what they're doing is they're using eisegesis, which is the opposite of exegesis. exegesis. Mm. See, when you have, that's those are Greek words, but and when you take something out of the scriptures, if you were like just found a, a copy of the scriptures on a desert island or deserted island, and <clears throat> you had never been exposed to any teachings before, you would read the scriptures and say, well, and you'd get out of the scriptures exactly what it's written in the scriptures, and you wouldn't be bringing things to the scriptures that you already believe, like the Trinity or uh, Lunar Sabbath. You would, certainly couldn't get that out of it. But when people have things that they believe and they take that to the study, then they read into the text, and that's eisegesis. So see, exegesis is taking out from the scriptures only, and then eisegesis is when you bring things and read them into the words, and you see things there, and you really are convinced yeah. Yeah. that, oh yes, he, there it is, one, mm. two, three, mm. there's three of them, or there's, uh, you know, yeah. it's just uh, it's just that simple, yeah. and the, the, the actual scriptures are not teaching the topic that they're uh, that they think that they're teaching. Mm. They're not. They're not teaching that in the mm. in the study. When you read a, a text or the context of of a, a verses of scripture in a whole chapter, maybe mm. the actual topic that people pull out of it isn't even being taught. Mm. But you know, they read it into the text. Mm. You're reading things into some people's words when they. When they speak to you, sometimes yeah. you, you take it the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. You know. so, yeah. At, so at the very close of this presentation on moon phases and lunar Sabbath, what do you really want to say at the end of it? What do you want to encourage your brothers and sisters to do? Well, I think that what they need to remember is that the, our, the actual goal is love, as you mentioned, mm. and... It, 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 even with all knowledge and all prophecy and mm. understanding, uh, we would be losing everything if we didn't have love. Mm. And to remember that there were warnings in Scripture mm. that we not get carried away by these sorts of little storms and winds and mm. doctrines that come along. Because these teachings that come along, uh, what was it? Paul warned Timothy mm. to remain in the in the in the way that he was taught mm. 
you know, and the way that we were taught, I know that there's errors in what we were taught, mm -hmm. but when the scriptures are used only, and they're not using the, the eisegesis technique where they're bringing things to the study that they want to see, but they look just at what the teacher, at what the scriptures are actually teaching, mm -hmm. then we will not have these sorts of false doctrines. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when somebody writes a book, and in the book, it, it analyzes things. And you're, when I first picked up my first Lunar Sabbath book, mm -hmm. I was going, well, they're just going to take me right to mm -hmm. where the error started, mm -hmm. you know, that we're apparently in, yeah. and who did it, and where it happened. Yeah. And they haven't ascertained that. You know, that's mm -hmm. one of the things I sent to that email. Yeah. When I sent that email to you last night, mm -hmm. it was last night for me, yeah. the one or the lady or the girl that had written to me mm. was hoping, and, and she was very kind. Yeah. She was a Sabbath person, yeah. and she was also an anti-Paul person. Yeah, what about that? I'm glad. Brothers and sisters, there's a that. new seminar coming up, brothers and sisters, <laughs> yes. on our dear brother, Shaw. <laughs> That'll be good. Yeah, in fact, I'm using the title from the from the scriptures, yeah. "Our Beloved Brother uh, Paul." Yeah, and it, it, that take, that's right out of the scriptures. Yeah, and then but there's people that say, "No, he's a her he's a heretic." Yeah, <laughs> he ought to. He, well, I'm not saying he ought to, but he might wind up on the on the messianic uh, hall of shame if he's yeah, not careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Well, he might, well, they reckon they're looking into a next one. I'd never even been to that site. That's how we're not into anything down here. We're just <laughs> as I looked well, on, I got a, a link from somebody today, and I was looking on it. I'm going, oh, what is this? <laughs> oh boy! And then they've got yeah. stay stay tuned, brothers and sisters. We're looking into the next person, and I'm thinking, are you serious? This is your job? <laughs> That's unbelievable. <laughs> oh, well, I was. I was listening, I was watching, uh, well, I was studying scripture, mm. uh, and I was reading Romans, mm. and Romans mm. is all about, uh, well, the, the, re the, the renewed covenant, but also the, the warnings that we're to, you know, be kind and, mm. and gentle with one another and, yeah. and not be, uh, you know, the way that we see things are, you know. Yeah. It's so sad to watch, but we... Uh, we really do need, a, like you were saying when you first called, that the love is just, uh, it's oh, totally necessary. It's the, it's got to be on the, the wind under our wings, yeah. you know. Well, it says you'll know, know my people, you'll know them by their love, one for another. Something. Right. Yeah. Right. It, it's, um, if you um, abide or live in my teachings, yeah. doctrines, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And of course, that's another text. But mm. Uh, mm. you know, and 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 the world will know you are my disciples mm. if you have love for one another. You know, and it's, and <laughs> there's a lot of people that are not believers yeah. that see that I know that know about this lunar uh, this uh, attack on me, for example, mm. and they see this incredible. They don't even know me. I mean, the people that are unbelievers do know me mm. and they know that I'm not anything like the things that are being said. Yeah. And I just wish people would be able to follow me around for a month or so with a camera and watch every little thing I do and everything I say. Yeah. And I am nothing like what that's what they're saying that I am. Yeah. But that's, you know, the way those sorts of things are. So, uh, so brothers and sisters, if you have a lot of money and you'd like to uh, start a reality TV show with brother Lou, you're uh -huh. invited to <laughs> oh boy to follow him round well, all day every day. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. I mean, I'm I, I am not hiding. We better. I, I we, never have. We better, I never have been hiding. We we better ask Phyllis how she feels about that. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Well, that's great. I think we've got enough on the lunar one now. That's yeah. Great. Well, that's awesome. I can close that yeah. one. Yeah, you know, it's, it's all basically interconnected, though. Mm. You know? Yeah, it is. Interesting.